Okay, I think we're recording. So, I tweeted out that uh, I had something for everybody, because everybody's been patiently waiting. Um, but back in the saddle, here with someone who kind of looks like me, so it might be like just weird on your screen to see me and someone that's like a different version of me. But, um, kind of been just on a hiatus, a crazy hiatus with YouTube. I don't even think I have the app on my phone anymore, and like, I don't know how many subscribers I have or whatnot, but like... I figured this will like be like riding a bike, get back in the thing, and hopefully get it revved up again. I got my brother here who's ready to go, and kind of just wanted to talk to you and see what the deal was. And the first thing was like, since Your I haven't beard? been, well, that I so <laughs> here's the thing: I've been keeping my beard for probably you're like longer. The evil ver- you're like the evil version of me. I've been keeping it for longer than I've wanted to because I wanted to save it for when we recorded. So I probably wanted to shave this like three days ago, but I was like, I got to keep going until we do the podcast so I can get your thoughts on it. But I will say on camera, it doesn't look as bad as it does in person. In person, it looks grimy. (laughs) Like, like if you're standing right next to me, it's like you see like shrubbles, you see the bottom of my neck, but shrubbles, I don't, I So I kind of have respect for people who like, who, and let's give people a little bit of background. You are a barber. You're kind of like a connoisseur when it comes to hair and like styling and just knowing, I guess you would have a better eye onto like what works for people, what doesn't work for people. So like, how can you tell? Cause you've always told me in the past, you're like, I think you've always said to me like, like no beard, but that might just be like a you thing without putting me behind it so what are your thoughts just like to beard to person but also like like looking at a person and seeing what fits their vibe yeah for sure so yeah i've I've been a barber since since like high school so i know i've seen so many different types of faces and head shapes and all these different like people sitting in front of me in a barber chair and and, (laughs) well yeah no for real and it, it matters because yeah, so you as my brother, I've always thought like, oh, it's better to be clean shaven. You'll look better for your job. You'll look better out in the world. Yeah. And people will just see you as more kind of like, you know, clean cut. And that's yeah. just why I've always suggested to you. Mm-hmm. But I think beards work for people that don't have like a strong jaw. Okay. Because it, it allows you to like recreate the shape of your face. Like, you know, you know who probably has, who doesn't look as like jacked as people think he is mm-hmm. is that that guy uh like dan blazeri oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 like he's he's all about like that he's, he's like the man right but yep. i think his beard has something to do with that as he angles it so that it looks like he has this crazy jawline yeah but if he shaved his beard he would have probably just like a like a mushy no he kind of looks like he would have like a still like a second well, i think beard, he's maybe... also i think he's also on like trt and different like yeah, steroids. I'm totally speculating, or he may have said it. I don't know, but I mean, even if he didn't have the beard, we also have the perception now because we've only seen him with a beard. That like that's what we think his jaw looks like. Well, no, I think I saw a picture of him like before he was really famous, yeah. and he didn't have a beard, and he just looked like a just like a normal dude. Well, it's like James and Harden. So- James Harden's got like a very strong beard, and it's shaped to like this like square looking, very like like rigid things so it kind of makes his jawline look good but i think to your point they show rookie pictures of him and it's just like a round chubby like yeah. fat little face which like yeah, think, like well, that it, doesn't it look like a a... it gives you character right it gives you a certain look but it has to be maintained because yeah. then there are people who just their beard go that's me and they just look like a, right you just look like a like blacker <laughs> like duck dynasty style but and that's why i have people... like respect for people that like maintain their beard but also like i don't know like would people ask you advice on their beard or how to do it because i don't know if is that a google search or like how do people start like knowing one what the fuck to put in their beard and like two like i don't even know i I don't even know where to start i don't know how to trim it because then if i go here's my thing i've tried to trim it up before in the past and i'll like take the razor here but if i go too low then i give up and i'll just shave the whole thing well the worst part is when people bring up their so if you, when I cut your hair, right, mm-hmm. every time that you're in town, I would cut your hair. And what I do is I cut your hair because your jawline has kind of. <laughs> well, careful. I'm very protective of my jawline. 
<laughs> but I always cut your hair underneath your jawline so that it's people who have a strong jawline when they get their beard trim you should cut it on their jawline because then it accentuates their jawline uh-huh. but if people have not a strong they don't they don't have a strong jawline what happens is you want to cut it underneath so that you don't show like a double chin oh okay. so it's not a beard then a double chin underneath yeah then it looks then you're accentuating the double chin yeah so i think how people to answer your question how people wind up um figuring things out is like remember back in the day you go to the barber shop and you'd have like give me a number seven right and it'd be like some guy with like a smurf yeah, yeah, yeah. thing in the front of his head and yeah be like, none of those haircuts on that sheet i think i've ever seen in like human mankind like they find people and just cut haircut. their hair yeah like it's yeah, exactly like they just do some crazy shit computerized on the top of someone's head because Whenever you leave the barber shop, you can never walk outside and be like, "Oh, there's number nine. Like that guy just got the number nine. No one has ever gone into a barber shop and looked at that poster and been like, "Give me the number nine," and actually walked out looking like it's like asking for a Big Mac and walking out with the commercial Big Mac. Yeah, that's a good point. You don't. It doesn't happen. But I still think it's even further away. Like the pictures that they like. If know, uh, well, the only places that still have that on their wall. Sorry, the barber shop that I used to work in. We used to give a specific type of cut, but for some reason, the owner always had the pictures of like the old school haircuts that nobody got. I, mean, I almost feel like it's just decoration at that point. No one's really paying attention to it. That, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, um, and that goes to another point that I was going to make about just even getting my haircut. I think there's like, there's levels to the barbershop because so we went back to New York and I and I've probably said this back on like uh, Kyle and Corn, but like I've given up on my hair at this point. Like it's gotten to a point where like I used to like there was like there was levels or like different sequences of when I cared about my hair. Obviously in high school, it's like you go to the barber shop, you want it cut every week, or like Friday, you need it cut, shaped up. And then as you get into like the twenties, college, like you still want to get it cut up for bigger occasions. But like when you're going to class, it's on some just okay. like fluffy shit. Like you're just sweatpants Whatever. and every. Then when you when you are like applying for jobs and getting professional and actually going through like the workforce, like you kind of maintain your hair and keep it like clean cut again and 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 maintaining it. But now, I mean, like now it's a different world with COVID and just like working from home that people are probably like not even like at to a point where I'm where I'm at now they've just given all hope so like before even quarantine I would like go to the barbershop and I didn't care who cut my hair I go to sport clip now and like it's like a woman who's (laughs) like for me to think that you would do that but but like the thing is like to work at sport clip they need to like go I think and get some professional shit so like they have the expertise and know with all to like do whatever they're doing but they're so yeah. bad that they'll still Zeke your hair that, like, I went home to New York and Molly's brother was like, he usually doesn't say shit, but he's a barber. And he was like, yo, who cut your hair? And I was like, yeah, I don't even – it's like – But it's also because we're a product of our environment. Where we grew up, everyone cared about their – I mean – Yeah, that's true to it, too. It was, it was really kind of crazy actually. Yeah, yeah. So the culture of where we grew up was go to the barber shop, get a good cut. You have to have a good barber. Yeah, the whole GTL was like our area. Right, like you can't, you couldn't just go to some random barber. People would make fun of you. Yeah, and that and that was a big thing. Like you don't want to go to school with a bad haircut, and pe- because everyone noticed those things. Yeah, because everyone was so tuned into that aspect of uh, that's like, a good culture. point. So that that's kind of why, even to this day, when you say I went to Sport Clip to get a cut, I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, but, but, but it doesn't matter. You, I mean, I cut my own hair, but that's also because I I can cut my own hair as a barber. I know how to cut my own hair. Yeah, but it also to your point is like territorial. So like where I live in like 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 um suburbs Illinois, practically in Wisconsin, my hair looks like it's kind of fresh like compared to the people out here which are probably just all Trump supporters like long mullet haired people. Supporters of good haircuts too. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of friends that are Trump supporters and I don't know, maybe they don't have I'm just good, saying like I'm just saying that you can't like isolate one population of people with bad haircuts i haven't seen I, many trump supporters like to... a fresh cut though there probably are <laughs> i'm just saying you're, you're thinking like middle america yeah middle america right? like where we went to school i went to Cortland, you went to binghamton like 
I think we're like where we're from in Westchester, to your point, like people really made it a point to have fresh haircuts. Whereas like middle America, I don't think it was like they would go to high school and have some schlubby hair and like not care about it as much as we do. For sure. But that's why even like when I cut Kyle's hair, like we have this in we have this thing in our heads that if we're doing something important, we need a good cut. Yeah. There was a lot of people out there that getting a cut wasn't a part of their preparation for some type of an event. It would be something else, maybe. Yeah. Maybe get a nice shirt or whatever. But for us, we knew that if you had an event coming up, it was the haircut. The haircut was everything. But one more point I'll make is like, I think each person, whether they found it or not, has like a designated look that fits them. So like I was looking at a picture of Jeff, Jeff Bezos. And he was, like, on a boat. And, like, granted, he's got the most money in the world. So, like, he's got a personal trainer. He's a bunch of steroids and stuff. Yeah, I know. Like, he kind of looked jack. And, like, he he was a little tan because he was on, like, some island. But, like, he had a ball. Like, he was bald. But compared to, like, an old, old clip of I saw of him when he was, like, trying to start Amazon. And, like, his hair was, like, disheveled. I was, like, he kind of looks like a normal human being now. Like, he found his look. Like, Jeff Ross has always said that, like, he found his look as a bald person. But if you watch him coming up as a comedian, his hair would be, like, he. it was, yeah. like, he had the curls. So I think everyone has a look. I don't even think I've found my look because I've gotten to a point where I go to the barbershop and they tell me, like, just the one on the sides and then, like, some scissors on the top. But if I went to, like, an official hairstyling place and they were, like, your hair goes this way. Maybe you do this. You know, like you've perfected that with your hair. It's like you know how your hair grows. Right. That's true. But then again, what one person think they what one person thinks looks good on, on you might not be what you ultimately think. It might be, yeah, I know. Like if you were in a movie, they'd say we need him to look this way. Yeah. And they would have some stylists. You know, you might look at yourself after and say that looks terrible. Yeah. You don't know. I mean, yeah. it's just you got to find what what you think looks the best and then just go with it. So that being said, my beard, I, I think after this call, I can finally cut it now. But I just at least, wa- you know, a good look for you is taking the clippers and trimming it down. Yeah, I'm definitely going to trim it. And uh, yeah, not, not do just like a fresh. Shape, like- yeah, but it's definitely to a point where it's like, so I went to the Knicks game last night. I went into my office last week and I, I was having like face to face interactions with people. And I was like, I feel like a homeless person right now that just hasn't showered or shaved and however and let me at least you know take care of this a little bit but it's it's uh it's grown fast man it's it's like it's it's coming up yeah your face your facial hair has always grown very fast but okay so that being said i haven't i didn't give the proper shout out to my guy adrew who you know when this video starts He's a wizard and like he's been like he's jazzed up about the podcast. He was he was like, dude, I'm waiting for it, ready for it to come back. And I hit him and I was like, hey, I'm thinking of doing something with my brother. Can you hook up the intro and add him in it? And he was like, all right, send me a picture. So I sent him like some random picture of you that you were joking. You were standing there like making a fit. Long story short. Shirt on or no shirt on? No, you had a shirt on, but I was like, he likes taking his shirt off. So like if you want to add that into his into the intro. But anyway, he hooked it up. So the beginning of the intro is Adrew. Um, shout out to Adrew because uh, he's a real awesome. one. He's been a fan of like you know Corn's world for a while. He's just a good dude. Um, I know. I was thinking maybe that this was going to be a Kyle and Corn, but I, I mean, I, I have takes on things too. Yeah, I can, no. I, Jets you know is what I mean? a smart I have guy. You're kind of like like my shadow to like put me back in line for anything that I go off course with like a bad uh, take on. You'll kind of revert it back to where it maybe should be. Um, but you also have like, you know, takes on things that like, you know, um, you know, your opinions or whatnot that don't always skew with, you know, what everyone, you know, is aligned thinking with. So it kind of, it kind of works. Well, that's why like I, I watch Kyle all the time. I watch breaking points all the time. And I'm always, I'm I'm pretty much in line. When I watch Crystal and Sager, I'm, I'm they're like in my heads. I'm like, yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm thinking. And I think we all have similar values. And for that reason, yeah, our opinions are very similar. Um, and same thing with Kyle. When I watch him, I, I think the same thing. And when I talk to him, like when I was cutting his hair that one time before Rogan, um, I was thinking to myself, I should I should have just recorded this mm-hmm. because it would have been a good podcast. We were talking about. Every single thing that was going on at that time. Yeah. And it was like, 
but but he and I were agreeing on pretty much everything. So because it's just kind of in in my mind common sense stuff. Yeah. Right? When you think about certain things, it just seems like common sense. I but here's the thing: I can also understand when people think when they have an opposing view mm-hmm. and there's merit behind it. And they're acting in good faith. They're not just trying to be a troll or just be a dick and say something because they know that it's controversial. Yeah. I could listen to them. I could hear them and, and have a conversation with them. Um, like if Kyle had a hot take on something, I know that I could talk to him about it and he'd say, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, Well, that's why that- I respect what he says sometimes because even when Trump was president, as bad as he was, I would be like, yo, like – he did this and be like, that was the one good thing he did. Like he wouldn't just always say everything was bad because he was a puppet, like all these other people on TV. Like, and that's why people respect him. But like the whole pot, like I've given up so much on just even following people's takes on Twitters and like listening to, listening to what they're saying, because at the end of the day, like it's such a mess and like, it's kind of real now because so Molly's sister is in Ukraine she sent a text message to the whole family that like she's being evacuated like she's coming to live with us i I didn't tell you but like that to me is wild like and it just goes to show that like and and i asked kyle about this and it was kind of like hey is the u.s doing a good thing by helping and going over there and like i can't even think that anything we do anymore is in good faith like i always i'm thinking always in the back of my mind now like all right the u.s is getting involved with that because there's some shit that they're getting out of it. Like, there's no, like, yeah. we're trying to save people. We're trying to be good people. Like, just the way that they've, like, everything we've seen here and how corrupt all these people are, that the my first instinct when they, when, when Doreen was like, hey, I'm leaving, like, they're making us back from Ukraine is like, okay, we're, we're in there for some bad reason. And, like, it, it's, I, I just don't trust anything we're doing. So all these people sad. who say shit about politicians and, like, it's all just like noise because at the end of the day our government's going to do whatever they do and they're going to still be corrupt and like all the shit with nancy pelosi being allowed to like uh you know buy stocks it's like yeah, yes that's it might like eventually get her to comment on it and maybe it'll stop it but like at the end of the day they're going to keep being corrupt ass motherfuckers i know but that's why we need voices like crystal Sager, kyle um because well just because they're actually out there you know i mean it's like well, if no one's but saying I, it, then it's like no one well, knows back about in the day, it. I used to, but yeah, I used to watch CNN. And I we grew up, we would take trips to Washington, D.C. every year. And I remember taking a tour of the White House. Like, wow, this is the White House. That's the president. And you just think everyone is just doing the right thing. You yeah. just think everything is the way it should be. And then yeah. you get older and you're like, whoa, why are we doing this? What? Why is my friend going off to war? Why did my friend die Yeah. in war? You know, and... Like, this is me speaking from yeah, yeah. my life experience, right? And like, uh, and then those are the types of things that make you question, what, what, what's their motivation? What are they doing this for? And when you think about Ukraine, people don't think of the human element of it. I feel like people think of Ukraine and they think of Russia and as American people, I mean, some people think it's not our fight. And I mean, personally, I think there's a conflict that's existed there for many, many, many years. Yeah, that's bigger than just our involvement in what's going on. So when we get involved, it's this, it's this uh, like egocentric mentality that we have to control the world and just save we the day. Yeah, the world. It's just like enough already. Yeah, you know, it's like send your kids. Like I think Kyle had a tweet fairly recently, and he was saying something about for all you warmongers that are signing on to sending troops to uh, Ukraine or whatever, you have to sign up and you have to go. It's just so easy to send someone else. But like yeah. when, when my boy Merlin goes off to war and comes back over 97, so 97% of his body burned, mm-hmm. third degree burns, and I'm looking at him and I'm not seeing the same person that I grew up with, you know, it's sad. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, like, what, did, what was this for? Yeah. And I didn't say, I never said it to him and said, you know, Dude, like, you're like this because of some bullshit war, but because you know I don't want to put his sacrifice in vain. Of course. But then you know it's like just crazy because he's only one person, but there's so many more that that happened to. And is this going to just perpetually happen? Like, it, it should be a, a rule that people have to have some, you know, some skin in the game. They have to have something that's that makes it real for them. They can't just make a decision 
and say, oh, yeah, let's just send troops. And- well, yeah, I mean, that happens with a lot of the politicians who, like, make decisions on women's rights when it's a room full of, like, white men, you know, in Texas or something like that. But, like, yeah, on the flip side of that is, like, Molly's sister actually physically has to, like, leave her job and, like, like uproot her whole life because of, you know, the decision that U.S. is making. And there's probably thousands and thousands of other people that have to go through that same thing. But, like... I think we're just think so about the people that can't evacuate. Yeah. Think about those people that live in Ukraine that are just there Living. on the border kind yeah. of waiting for something to happen because they don't have any other options. Yeah. That's the, that's the other thing is very often in our country we don't think of the civilian toll that it takes on people who, in these different places where we're involved. Yeah. And you never really hear about it either, you know, because the US isn't going to report. Like they, the thing that I always laugh about and I used to say this is like they did a like they'll do an internal investigation of like uh, con- uh not Congress um whatever it is uh maybe Congress or this uh the Pentagon or something will do an internal investigation of themselves and find no wrongdoings of anything they did like overseas and be like yeah okay what were you gonna find anything bad that you did and like punish yourselves <laughs> like it's just a joke and I just think it's a joke yeah. We're so, like, institutionalized and, like, I've just been doing stuff for so long. Like, the thing that I just laughed about recently was the Army was on TikTok. They're, like, TikTok account. And I saw – I don't know if it was a tweet, but they had the Island Boys. You ever see those? I, you yeah. probably saw them on TikTok. Yeah, I know they who they are. paid the Island Boys to, like – I have TikTok, but, yeah, I know who they are. But they did – they paid them to do a recruiting video for the Army. Oh, my gosh. And it's just, like, it, it's – it's – I have no faith in anything, and that's why it's like I can't even watch any of the like politics. That shit alone because... is sad because that's their targeted audience. Yeah, They're no. saying we need to target an audience that thinks that these two clowns, uh, or, or listens to these two clowns, yeah, in a way that they can make a crazy light, like uh, such an important life decision based off of two dorks. To doing something that they were paid to do by the government yeah. it's just mind blowing and then ultimately those are the people that don't have many options and instead of our country and I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher so I see this firsthand. instead of our country investing in maybe vocational education or giving people a path other than just college it's well you should join the military and I'm not saying the military is wrong because there are a lot of successful people that came out of the military yeah, 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 I, have a, I have a lot of friends that are in the military or were in the military and I, I get it, but at the same time, when your targeted audience is, hey, you know you're not going to college, so here's your only other choice. And they make it look so appealing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But talk about anything else, the potential of getting sent off to war and potentially dying. Those are the things that are scary, and and it's just so one-sided. There's a, there's a population in our country that are destined for that from birth because of what they're given i'm not saying they can't get out of that i'm just saying that they're starting with a lot a lot more obstacles than other people would have yeah okay i want to ask you since um i haven't been i've been pretty lazy with it and i want people to kind of understand who you are but i don't think i think maybe two or three times in my life i've really seen you kind of just not like binge on some junk food for more than like a week or something like that. And I want to know just how through for practically like 25 years, you've managed to just stay consistent. And like, because I've seen you have like, like a Taco Bell or like, you know, like, or, but like, McDonald's though. but like you've had a burger or something before, but like, I, does it not taste good to you that like, you're like, I need to have this, more consistently in my life that like it doesn't turn into like a extended thing because for me like it's like it's hot and cold so i can like have white castle and like keep having it whereas you you'd be like i could maybe get my white castle fix and then be good for another 12 years (laughs) see because the way that you do it i feel like you lose sight of the fact that you used to be ripped yeah i was i was in good shape or like yeah and i felt good together yeah you used to be you used to be on point going to the gym and uh when you do those types of things it makes you not want why not want to mess up yeah because if you do something good it's it's cyclical right so you do i wake up in, at five in the morning right before the kids are up mm-hmm. i go down to the basement 
I row, I do push-ups, dead hangs, you know, sit-ups, kettlebell work, and I do that every morning. So when I do that, the last thing in my mind is, oh, I'm about to crush a bacon, egg, and cheese on a croissant with ketchup and all this. It's just not in my mind. So, <laughs> But when I wake up at 6 o'clock, I'm like, I'm ready to crush a bacon, egg, and cheese. <laughs> like, yeah, you missed the workout part. <laughs> exactly. But, that, but that's my point. So the consistency isn't in – of course, it's mental discipline and physical discipline. But I've also found things that I enjoy doing and the delayed gratification of knowing that I feel good when I look at myself and I'm looking the way I want. Well, it's I'm wild because I, I – consciously know how good i felt and looked when i was doing that but there's still some demon in my mind that's like nah dog like you're still good right now like but i do realize when i was making my shakes and i was i felt more energized and not as tired but like i'm still like it's just easier to just like just just of give them a bag easier. of chips like you know plus yeah, like I- with kids and that's why i kind of Anyone who's listening, I'm about to shit on anyone who does have doesn't have kids because you have no excuse to be like, I'm tired, I don't want to do shit because with kids you really are tired and don't have time to do shit. But like so I don't I don't have sympathy for anyone listening that says like they don't have time to do some shit. So that's more of a motivation to get up and do yeah, some well, shit instead of listening to this. <laughs> kids are definitely a game changer. I'm not downplaying any everybody has their stuff. Everybody's got something going on. So I don't I know I'm being very diplomatic right now, but I kind of feel you though. When I hear someone who doesn't have kids saying, oh, "I don't have time," I'm like, "You could find the time. Yeah, you could make the time. You could create that time that you need to do whatever. It's it's just a matter of priorities." Yeah, because, yeah. yeah. And I sound like some kind of crazy motivational speaker, but when I think about it, the only possible time that I could do anything is at five in the morning. Yeah, because I know the kids are waking up at six forty-five. So if I don't do that, then that's it. My It doesn't happen in my day. I'm at work. I'm coaching wrestling. I have to go home and take care of the kids and put them to bed. So when it's just like the day keeps snowballing, if you don't get it done first, then it's it doesn't rough. happen. Yeah. So, so, but that's what I'm saying. But it's all like one thing leads to the other. If I work out in the morning, then I want to eat well. And if I eat one good meal, I want to eat another good meal. And then I feel better. And then I my day ends and I know that the next day starts the same way. But of course, I have those moments when I'm like, I just need a, I just need to eat whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I've also programmed my mind, and this is another thing that people are probably listening, and they're like, this guy is psycho. <laughs> but, but it's but I've programmed my mind to see certain foods a certain way. Sugar, for example, I and this is I know people are gonna think I'm crazy, but I've programmed my brain, even if it if it wasn't on purpose, to look at it like a drug. So. When someone opens up a pack of sugar and they put it in their coffee, it's like it's like me seeing them putting some cocaine in their coffee real quick. And I know because like obviously cocaine and sugar. Are two well, the sugar things. packet's tough, but if someone cracked open some like of those colorful like like it's sour straws, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, oh, if somebody God. cracked it, I would never do drugs. But if someone cracked open like some like some of those sour straws with all the colors of the rainbow on it, like oh, the like God. the air the Airhead one specifically. That to me, I'd look at that and be like, "Damn, let me like, come on, you can't open that and not give me one of those." <laughs> so that's why if I if someone opens that around me, I have no temptation at all. It doesn't even not even for a second. I'm like, "Oh, I want to have that." Yes, yeah, see, I've been wired I, differently. I, all I keep thinking in my mind is, "Why? Why are you putting that in your body?" I know because it, but but it's bad because with our kids, I don't want to hold them back from anything. I want them to experience those things so they don't feel restricted. Yeah. See, eating it, it's in my mind. I'm like, my daughter's doing cocaine. Yeah, daughter's <laughs> shooting up right now, which is in my it's terrible. But that's kind of how I program my brain. So it's it's crazy that I think that way. Yeah, for my own personal well being, that's no, it works. Yeah, how I eat and what I do and the decisions that I make because that's how I think about it. But I, I take a step back when it comes to other people, because especially you know I don't want to have my kids restricted, restricted, and then they go out on their own and they keep saying to themselves, oh, my dad's been holding all this sugar back. Like that's the, Those are the kids in college that we saw that were never able to drink or do anything. And, and go, our parents were very... The first the party, they just go ham, ham. Yeah. And you see them passed out on the floor. Yeah. And you're thinking to yourself... I know why. why. 
So. Well, yeah, and you're like, I know why, because you probably weren't allowed to do any of this. And, yeah, that's why, I mean, like, yeah, I think, uh, like, us specifically, like, I can go to a party and just have, like, a beer and be good because I never had, like, I was never, like, had that restriction from our parents of being, like, you can never have this. So, like, you know, we, like, yeah, no, I know what you're saying. But I was that dude in high school when, like, they they were selling, like, Swedish fish or airheads, like, in the in the hallways. I was, like, that that crackhead going to the locker getting all that candy from the people but like if they were coming around with like (laughs) like almonds and like something healthy and that is just how the way of the shit was then maybe i would be like wired differently to have some healthy stuff but in school when someone would have in their locker like blow pops or like all that stuff that was like you needed to get that there's a delay on your end do you see me delayed when i'm talking to you no you're good but like, there's like a. It looks like someone's taking a picture every time. I don't know. It's probably my computer. It ha- I told you we gotta ru- like wear off some of this rust. But um, I wanted to ask you. So, shoveling. I had to shovel the driveway the other day, and it is it still delayed. It is. But whatever. Yeah. Is it? Can you not hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. So. I wanted to just get your thoughts on shoveling too. And if you thought that people who live in warmer places during cold weather seasons, are they more productive during those months than people like myself who don't want to do shit when it's cold outside? I think so. Yeah. I think when it's cold, especially we're in Chicago. It was like negative 10. It was like the gas pump was freezing up. We were outside. That's crazy. Yeah. Like freezing. And, and we're, and where I am in New York right now, obviously... It's a blizzard, there's, right? There's about 12 inches of snow on the ground. So, But you'll never I, have the urge to hire someone and shovel your driveway? Like, you'll always get out there and do that shit, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I could never... If there's something that I can't do, then I have to hire someone. But if it's something that I can somewhat do, and you know me, I'll yeah. YouTube it, I'll figure it out. I'm not paying someone to do it. Yeah. If it's If it's a matter of, I have to do this... So if it's a matter of I could potentially do this and my roof collapses, yeah, even if I think I might to be do able to do it, it I, I won't do it because I don't want to take that that L. If uh, yeah, that would be bad roof. if your roof collapsed. Then, but as far as being productive, being in the Northeast or being in in a cold climate in the winter, you don't want to do anything. It's dark at four in the afternoon. It when it's cold and snowy today, I don't want to leave the house. And if, you, if, if it were Florida, I'd be out for a run right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I have so much respect for, like, just, like, a grizzled, like, Wisconsin man that I see who knows how to, like, build a barn in, like, the middle of the snow and, like, d- just do a whole bunch of crazy shit because all I can do is shovel my driveway. And I, I like, I'm never excited to do it, but when I do it, I feel accomplished because when it's done, it's like, wow, okay, I just did that. Like, the driveway looks clean, whereas, like... Going back to my beard, I'm so lazy to a point where I don't even like I, I don't want to take the time to to do my beard, even though I'll see at the end like a a, a new face. <laughs> but shoveling, I'll always do. Like I'm never gonna not shovel, and I think like our dad like will shovel the driveway until he's like 90 years old, and his back's hurting. But like that's one thing that I think makes you more like. You get like like thicker skin and like Rogan's spoken about this and stuff like that is like you have yeah. like this kind of like just like it's like a just a you are like an earned shield you get when you shovel and you bear through the cold for the winter as opposed to just living in LA and it's warm and you're chilling the whole year round. Yeah, I think uh he had he was mentioning something about people in Alaska when he was talking about that and he was just yeah, talking that's about like a different how breed. People, it's just nuts. And that's why I think about even with sports. When you go upstate in New York and you see some of these schools, I just feel I feel that some of those kids have such an advantage. Well, I mean, in, in, in combat sports, wrestling. Yeah, I was going to say, like, if they were up, doing hunting or some shit, they'd definitely have well, an advantage. But they're up at four in the morning moving hay bales in the farm. Yeah. And it's just the work ethic. So when you tell them, all right, we have wrestling practice and we're doing this, that, and the other, they're just – they're locked in and they can take – pain yeah and you're just used to getting beat down and getting back up so i um i envy people who have that grit but at the same time 
you know, it's like you either have it or you don't. You, you know, it's the, it's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, if you, if you grew up in a place where it's just not a part. Of, if you grew up in a more urban or even suburban area, you don't think about those things because that's not a part of your life. Yeah. When you grow up in a rural area, you just do things because that's what's normal. Yeah. And then someone says, "Hey, is there, there's this sport. You should try it out." You get to tackle people and try to pin them and control them, and they're thinking to themselves. Yeah, I could probably do that. And they have these they have this crazy strength from doing stuff that they didn't even think about that we, that you or I had to go to the gym to do. Yeah. That's why I don't I mean, I'm shitting on a lot of people today. So I don't see any real benefit or like um like positive feature from someone from like LA or California or Florida because like the only thing I real benefit I could see is maybe like Mentally, they're such peace of mind that like they they're just in a better headspace because they've never really had to endure any, you know, like weather changes or like someone saying fuck you and shoulder shrubbing them when they're walking in the cold. Like so like mentally, they're just in that like Zen state where they can kind of just, you know, live longer because they kind of just understand that everything's going to be all right. Whereas well, I think. Sorry. No, no. Whereas, like, just like the cold weather is like you're more like, it, like you're just ready to like fight or like at any moment. Well, that's why I think that people have this. New York has this reputation, yeah, of being a gritty city where people just don't care about each other and they just keep walking and they don't. People are. <laughs> someone gets hit by a car. And everyone's like, "Oh, it sucks." But to Go that forward. point, Minnesota's way colder, and every person I've met from Minnesota is the nicest motherfucker I've met in my life. So shout out to right. anybody listening from Minnesota. If you're from Minnesota, write some shit in the comments because I just want to shout you out because every every single person I've met from Minnesota is like, they are, like, they'll, like, jump in front of a bus even if they don't know you to save your life. They are the nicest people. And I they're think that has cold. to do also with the fact that New York is more of a capitalistic cutthroat society where people have come to work and make money. So they're 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 hyper focused on their personal goals. So they're not trying Whatever to make those... money in Minnesota. <laughs> Jed shitting on Minnesota. No, I'm just I don't kidding. think that I don't think that people move to Minnesota t- with the same intentions that they do to move to New York. If you move to Minnesota it's because you have a job and your job is to do X Y and Z. I know that there's Yeah, but if you're just born in Minnesota Right, I just don't think that Minnesota has that same mentality. No, I, I agree with you. I know, but like, for, I'm just curious. What, like, there's like big um, companies there, like, and the thi- yeah. like targets there. But like, the last company I worked for, Lifetime Fitness, was in Minnesota, and it's like a huge company. But everyone, even at the top, was still mad passive and like not that like down to like uh, like make as much money as possible. They were more just like, all right, we'll get there when we get there, type of thing. And they were yeah. still successful. Yeah, no, I, I know. I'm not. I think that people still have drive. Yeah, and yeah. want to make a good life life for themselves. I think just the difference between that and New York is that well, the New York has this. Yeah, and it's just cutthroat. Yeah, maybe in Minnesota, your job doesn't work out, and you find another one. Whatever. <laughs> That's probably just, the mentality in Minnesota. Like, whenever someone gets fired in Minnesota, they're probably just like. Eh, I'm getting <laughs> yes, that's really it. Whereas New York is like they're ready to either sue or write like a mad like fucked up email. To the because company. there's ten people that want that job behind yeah. them. Yeah, there may not be a thousand people gunning for the same job in Minnesota. It might be twenty. Yeah, I don't. I'm not, I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass. I don't. I'm not a Minnesota expert, but in New York, I do know that there's a limited amount of jobs, and there's so many people. And everyone is just focused on what they have to do. If you've ever been on the subway in New York, it's like you can people are doing flips and backflips and and holding on to the rails on the subway, and you're sitting there like this. Yeah, like yeah. You're, you're, there's a Cirque du Soleil performance in front of you for free, and you're sitting in your seat on the subway if you have a seat, thinking to yourself, just "Get me off this train! Get me off this train!" That's the mentality. New yeah. York is. Yeah, I know. No, it's 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 wild. And I don't even know why I bring that up, but I think it's kind of because I was like, it's negative eight degrees outside, but I still want to get outside and shovel this driveway and do this. And like, yeah, I think that like translates to other parts of 
my life when I think I'm lazy for doing something, but there's someone out there that like is either hiring someone to do that shit or like living somewhere warm, not even having to deal with any of that. So like shout out to anyone who lives in somewhere cold because I have mad respect because the snow, the ice, all yeah, that shit is miserable. At the same time, when you're, when you're cleaning up your front yard after a hurricane. Yeah, that, that too. Probably, yeah, that uh, probably sucks. But you could be doing it in some shorts and like a tank top. So it's like. That is true. I wouldn't mind. You know, like cleaning up and doing anything. I would. I kind of thought about this while I was shoveling. I was just like, why doesn't every person in the world just live somewhere that's warm all year round? Like, like the U.S. map should just be no population in Chicago. Like just for certain words, like everyone should just be allowed to move somewhere else. That's warm because people would just get more shit done and they would just be like happier and healthier and like we would just have like a perfect utopian society. But on the flip side, without winter, there's no summer. I mean, what I mean is, and that that was for if you're from New York or you're from a cold climate, you might (laughs) understand what I'm trying to say. With without without bad, there's no good. Yeah, it sounded like a deep quote or something like that. That like you got to think about for a second. You so you appreciate the summer and the spring. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's true. Because once the weather turns and you can go outside and you're not like, oh my god, I just I have to go back home. When that weather turns, your mindset it's crazy, but it's almost it's in the sense that you've suffered through the winter, so now you've earned the nice weather. But it's it's you know hit it, like would you appreciate the the would you appreciate the warmth? In Florida, if you were there for the next 30 no, years. that's a I, good point. I, I say yes now. Yeah. But you might get up and say, oh, my God, it's so hot out. What is this? This is crazy. Yeah. I just want to put a sweater on and have a nice fall day. Yeah. And so- there's something that snow does, like, even when you see it with your kids. I think just instinctually, like, snow and playing in the snow just, like, brings joy to, like, kids. And, like, you can even see that. I'm always fascinated when, like... There's people that are like 20, 30 years old that will like come to New York or Chicago when we live there and they're like, I've never seen snow before. And I'm like, one, how is that even a thing? And they're like, they're like a kid in the candy store when they see it. Like, it's like, there's something that snow does. What? It's got to be so crazy. I just, I know. Imagine. But on the flip side of that, I don't know if you, I've been in, I like one time I was in California Christmas time and that to me was like, whoa this is weird you know so like think of that on the opposite side yeah i mean i I would think about it in terms of never having seen a tornado or something but that's a natural disaster that's pretty rare yeah no but christmas comes every year round you know and like it snows every year you're saying being in a warm climate yeah just the opposite of what you've known your whole life like i've never seen a summer christmas you know like i've never been in 90 degrees what would be an example of something that happens pretty frequently enough that it's not unusual? So if it snows here, we're not thinking to ourselves, holy shit, it's snowing. The world's going to end. We're used to it. It's fine. It's snowing. But for someone who has never seen it before, they're amazed. Oh, my God, snow. I'm trying to think what the flip side of that would be for us. If we went somewhere where we saw something that's relatively common oh. for people yeah, I guess if you go to like Hawaii and you know. see like a uh, a volcano erupting, <laughs> like that's yeah, like waking up every morning like oh, there's another volcano erupting. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't like, know happening either though. I don't know. I just, I just, I just have like a lot of respect and appreciation for for myself, more or less. That that gets to bear through the cold. <laughs> what um, else? um, I wrote down a couple more things. So this is all stuff that happened during the week that I wanted to get your like just thoughts on because this one was kind of like I kind of paid attention to it but kind of not so Biden called that guy son of a bitch from Fox News and like people were giving him praise because he was like authentic and like you know whatever and then he later like apologized one I kind of don't even care but like it kind of just goes to show that like any politician who's just naturally themselves and like just says something that's authentic and genuine, people will rock with you like so hard. So like the fact that there's no person next to Biden that was like, hey, your approval rating and everybody rocked with you when you just said son of a bitch. So like maybe let's go in that direction as opposed to like 
another guy on his shoulder that's like, you need to apologize, man. You need to get in front of this. And really, like, that's Fox News. You got to say sorry to him. And then he goes that route and says sorry. And everybody's like, come on, man. Stop being a bitch. Like, we liked you when you just said son of a bitch. So, like, I didn't have a take on it either way. But I kind of was like, my first thought was like, yeah, you're just being authentic. And, like, like the same thing with Bernie. Anytime he, any interview, he's just being himself. And people that's rock with that. Problem. I know. But, like, the fact that, like, they can't see that with Biden and he's going to, like, lose his reelection because he's trying to, like, apologize and play these party lines. It's like, that's the stuff that gets me mad. I know because the Democrats do it to themselves. It's No one's doing it to them. They're doing it to themselves. They keep thinking that they're smarter than the system, that they can – they don't just say, we need a good candidate. Be yourself. Do your thing. You know, it's and if a candidate does do that – and starts to gain momentum, like Bernie. They're like, "Oh no, no, no! Shut that down! Shut that down!" Like they, like they know better. Yeah. Than us. Yeah. And that, that kills me because I'm at the point right now where I don't know who they're gonna throw out there. It's gonna be uh, oh the Democrats. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. I mean, the because, fact that they like, I see articles that's like Hillary Clinton, like, and like they like just think that they know better. They think that they know better. Yeah. And it's wild because you start seeing it's so slow. It's like just a drop in the bucket. Like you'll see CNN put out a tweet that's like, did you know that like fish oil and vitamin D is actually a good um, thing to combat like COVID-19? And then like people are like, yo, like we've known this way back in the day. Like, you know, it's like they pick up everything that like, yeah, like Crystal, Kyle and Joe Rogan like say back in the day and very slowly start picking it up just because there's so many like old heads out there that are like, just don't know common sense. Like they just need to be force fed this stuff from like a TV news station. And like, I don't know. No, I agree. I agree. And, and what I'm so sick and tired of, and I see it because when I swipe on my phone, yeah, I get like, I get the Apple news headlines yeah. and every headline is sensationalized. Um, coronavirus cure question mark yeah it's... many people think this might be the answer like dot 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 and then you're thinking i'm just thinking to myself th- th- there are so many writers out there and they're probably more focused on what their headline is going to be yeah instead of what the content is of their article because if no one clicks on it no one reads it so they have to put out some well that's why i said to some... rogan when we were when me and kyle were down there i said to him i was like Someone was picking apart something he said, and I was like, they, they see a dollar sign with you. It's like putting like LeBron James's name in an article for an NBA writer. Like any Joe Schmo is gonna click on it because it's like LeBron James. Joe Rogan's that same right. hot topic, like hit a home run button. Like it's so it's like it, it's what draws the eyeballs. So it's like they don't even care what their article is about. They just want to get people's attention with some bullshit, and then like there's no substance to what they're writing or like so I don't know. Well, I think that's why they try to cash in on the whole ivermectin thing, and they just crash yeah. and burn. And yeah. when they did that, they doubled down instead of just saying our information was flawed. And ultimately, we recognized that it wasn't horse medication that he was taking; it was a human doctor prescribed version. So, but instead of but that's the thing is everyone's doubling down. It's the Trump effect. I yeah. feel that people nowadays <clears throat> have taken their cues from whoever it is. Except Joe Biden, happening. like apologizing. <laughs> but that's all the Democrats. That's the whole idea behind cancel culture. Culture yeah. is for the people who don't let it affect them. Joey Diaz, Joe Rogan, all these people that have been attacked. Tim Dillon. They, they don't get mind to it. Tim Dillon, by the way, <laughs> who I think is so hilarious he is hilarious yeah podcast and he'll go off on rant sometimes and i just tune out whatever i'm doing but then i'll tune back in he had this one thing and i know that it's someone else's stuff but when he was talking because he'll find random articles and he'll just comment on it which is and it was his his take and he was talking about this guy who shot both of his parents apparently they still they survived but he but yeah but he was going off and it was just because the guy was from Long Island, and he knows he's from Long yeah, Island. Yeah, so he, he understands those type of people. And then he hit he hit um, a line where he said something like, um, 
everybody in Long Island wants to kill their parents or something like. You just it's ridiculous. It's like I wish I had the courage to kill my parents or to shoot my parents in the back. I don't know. It was just ridiculous. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, obviously, I know people don't really feel that way, but as they a probably comedian, do in Long Island. He, yeah, no, I know. Maybe they do, but he caught me with that one. I just yeah, no, he's, he's he's timely. He's good with like his like his like quick things. Um, all right, I wanted to ask one more question. Do you remember the last time you had a Klondike bar ever? I saw you posted on that, and it must have been at Dad's house, and it must have been one that was expired <laughs> for a year or two because he used to have so much stuff in that freezer. The little elves, Keebler elves. Yeah, yeah, those are the yeah. The, the greatest thing in it, I, I probably you weren't supposed to freeze those. You're not supposed to freeze. No, those. but he was onto something there because those were very good. Like, like the chocolate ones frozen are very good. Girl Scout cookies frozen, just Thin Mints. I don't think you can froze like the Samoas or anything like that. But like, there is something to freezing cookies that I think he kind of was like hip to before. Even if I don't even know if it's a thing now, maybe like he's the only person who does it. But freezing cookies, low key, is like a. It was kind of genius because the chocolate got cold, and then it had like the little like graham crackery like perforated part of the cookie, and I, and it like it like snapped perfectly. There was no real crumbles that happened once you started eating the cookie because it was frozen. So like, I kind of give him credit to freezing the cookies because like, our dad's a real smart guy, but like, I I wouldn't like think you'd be the type of guy to buy some cookies and be like now i'm gonna throw them in the freezer to like give it extra value like there had to have been a reason for like maybe prolonging the lifespan of the cookie i don't think it was maybe because he thought a frozen cookie tasted better than a regular cookie. no everything that dad did was because it it was to save money or to help prolong the life of a yeah, product yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. Would, everything in the freezer i, I would <laughs> probably put money on the fact that there's something in that freezer from when we were kids oh now, yeah well no they're in his refrigerator like, there might be a fish stick in the back of the freezer there was like the champagne <laughs> bottle or something from like his wedding or a friend's wedding from like 1978 that would just chill next to our ketchup bottle and like it would always just be in there like some fancy ass champagne bottle and then yeah. i've told this story before too but i went and like opened the cabinet one time after like because he renovated the kitchen but, like, the way he renovated the kitchen was he just took all the shit out, renovated the cabinets, and then put all the shit back in there. <laughs> and there was pancake mix, and I poured the pancake mix into the bowl, and Ant straight came out of the pancake mix. So, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah, even, no. even there was Remember the, li the liquor cabinet that he used to have in the living room? There was, like, a cabinet that pulled out like this. Maybe. It was next to where the window was. There was Maybe. a wooden cabinet. It was a wooden cabinet. Anyway, there was it was like the that was like everyone can probably picture where their parents kept the liquor when they were growing up. I'm picturing like a hotel room where they have like the liquor and like the pull out like little refrigerator. No, there was a spot, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it was to the point where I didn't even want to like sneak. It was if you had a friend over and dad wasn't home. If I had a friend over and dad wasn't home, I would think like, oh, I know where the liquor is. Yeah. But the liquor was so old <laughs> and so crusty and whatever that I remember thinking to myself, because when you're a teenager, you're just like, how can I drink? Yeah, yeah, whatever's there. Where And you can't really, you might be able to go to the liquor store and use a fake ID or something, but you didn't want to really try because you're, I'm not trying to get caught. So everyone's probably like had an idea where their parents liquor was yeah and I, that that's where dad kept the, kept the liquor but i never wanted to touch any of it because it was all it was like some, some old <laughs> russian vodka that was probably like maybe given to him for free and it was it's it was probably like some free. authentic shit maybe but i don't know i think i feel like i've tried to drink it one time and i was like oh this stuff is this is probably like no longer even alcohol <laughs> it's kind of funny to see this stuff now as like well i say like adult but like i mean i don't know i was like at a water park a couple days ago and i was like with our like my kids and i saw like other dads and i was like i feel like i don't look like those dads like they look like dads but yeah, I feel the same way. but that to that point is like when you're a kid and you're thinking about like going out and buying liquor and like just the loopholes and battles you got to go through but now when you actually like buy some liquor for a party and like you see the guy behind the counter and like they just don't give a shit about like selling liquor or like if you're a minor so like 
the stuff you would see as a kid that like you would get worried about now as an adult you see it and it's just like none of that like nobody cared about any of it cuz it's like yeah there's so many things like that though even as a teacher when i see a kid in the hallway who maybe is thinking to himself like i'm not in class right now and there's a teacher walking by me i'm thinking to myself like i got to microwave my lunch yeah 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 they like, think you know, you're going like, to say something like, what class are you going to? Where are you? Yeah, like, I'm going to call your parent. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. I, I, everything changes when you get older. and You start to realize, like, nothing matters. When you were a kid, none <laughs> of that stuff mattered. Everybody had their own issues. Everyone had their own stuff they were thinking about. Aye. All right, we're back. Um, we'll try and do this, yeah. like, often. I've just, like, jot, jotted some stuff down. I had, um, what else do I have here? We can talk about, like, uh, our, our trips to DR, Colombia. We could talk about stuff like that in the future. Yeah, there's are a lot we, of stuff uh, we how, can talk we about. Almost, well, I thought we were getting carjacked and maybe killed that one time in DR. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, there's, uh, a, there's a whole bunch. We, we didn't have drugs, obviously, but no, but they, they thought, thought like that just I was it was like drugs with my friends were Dominican. It was like four white guys in the car, and yeah, we could we could tell that. But the YouTube the right channel's book. back. Ed. Hopefully the audios. <laughs> what was the last one? I said w- w- no. I just said w- with a rifle to my head. Oh yeah, yeah. That wasn't a fun moment. No, yeah. There was a, yeah a lot of craziness that went down. Um, just but thank God I speak Spanish because imagine I didn't, and we were just sitting there, and these guys like had guns to our heads. Yeah, and... that would have been really bad. But it actually worked in our favor because you pretended you didn't know Spanish because you were telling us the guy wanted us to follow him to the police station, and he knew everything that he was saying. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I have my, I have my, my, I know how to comport myself when it comes to being in the Dominican Republic. I used to live there, so I, so for people who don't know, I'm just saying. But I, I understand culturally what it's like when, I mean, you're trying to get over. Officers don't speak English out there, so I know when and when not to turn it on and turn it off. But when we had those, uh, that moment with the the police in the capital, that you no, know, that was different. That was a different story. I, I if I didn't. I had to start speaking Spanish in that moment. Yeah, yeah, we can we we can get into some of that. I think people. We'll get, that. We'll get back. That's Jed. That's me. Channel's back. I gotta like figure out how to like re-upload my my YouTube like on my phone and stuff like that. But yeah, thanks for everyone for if you if you did tune in and you made it this far. Hey, thanks yeah, for listening. Saying. And, I probably uh, lost all my subscribers by now, but I love all you guys. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's awesome to see when people are commenting. No, when people show love, that's like that. That's what like I kind of like wanted to get back in the groove because like it was cool, and people were stu- like people send me DMs on Twitter and they'll like say like, "Hey man, I'm moving to Chicago. Like you know, love the podcast, love corns. Like they'll show love, and it's kind of like just it's cool. You know, it's like rewarding that one person like rocks with your thing. Like Molly's doing. Um, a podcast now and she's got like her tiktok that's like kind of blowing up and like someone will write something and it's like that's a random ass person in minnesota that like rocks with you and like yeah, i, cool. I never met you you know there's, a community, behind it. there's yeah. a community behind it no there, there is something to that for sure and even when people put like fucked up comments about you <laughs> people are gonna be shitting on the beard the beard i i could care less i told you i'm at a point where it's like i go out in some sweats and a hoodie and but like once like, i shave it up like the dad card when you yeah, just stop caring it. about stuff yeah so that there's a certain um there's a certain beauty to that in and just stop when you stop caring about you know Everything. people think and the one yeah. i want to see is hopefully and this used to be a staple back in 88 but every time i posted sofa king like 13 seconds in would write something so sofa king hopefully you're still alive i think you were from like west virginia or something like that yes. <laughs> sofa king was the man sofa king was like the man he'd be on all the lives just rocking out with us like he was like following molly's vlogs and like i was like yo sofa king pull back a little bit bro like let us know like you're not outside of my window right now just watching my family <laughs> but like sofa king we kind of rocked with you hard so like much respect to sofa king i'm really hoping the main reason I wanted to bring this back was just to see if so- Sofa King would be the first comment on the shit. I think he'll stay true. I think he'll be there. I think he'll he'll put something in the comments. Hopefully, Sofa. Hopefully, Sofa King that you didn't vote for Joe Manchin, and that's one thing I wanted to ask too, real quick. Is like how, wow. but like how? Then this is something that like I gotta ask Kyle about too, like on some like technical shit. Maybe you know, but like how does Mitch McConnell? 
How does Nancy Pelosi, how does Joe Manchin, like, how do they keep winning their shit whenever, like, the election cycle is, like, I saw... Mitch McConnell wins because he fucks the Democrats, and those people in his district just want to see that. But where's he? He's He's, he's he's Alabama, right? I think, is he 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 Alabama or or Arkansas? Oh, maybe Kentucky. He's he's either, like, yeah. I, I, I think he's from Kentucky. There's still some, like... Like, it happened in Alabama. Maybe I'm thinking Alabama because, like, they voted a governor or someone, like, who was a Democrat. Like, there's some change happening of people who are, like, flipping and that are not as conservative that want, like, that, like, you know, all the things that Democrats want. You know, like, I don't know, the shit, the whole rundown of, like, you know, good shit for liberals. But, like, my point is, like, how Nina Turner, I don't know how long ago it was, but she lost, like, her race for senate i saw she's running again so like whoever she's running against has to like re like rebattle how come there's never that rebattle with like joe manchin and you know um the the mcconnell and nancy pelosi like why have they been there for five thousand years yeah i mean if if i had to take a guess and obviously i'm not i'm no expert on this um but if I had to take a guess, I would say it's just like one of those things. Like, how does Arnold Schwarzenegger become governor of California? No, but like, I, but he's not no, like it's, forever. It's name recognition. It's but it's like name recognition. It's what you know. It's what you're comfortable with. But people so- aren't, I think, as tuned in as other people think. When people go to the voting booth and they just say, "Oh, this is the guy," and it, I don't know. But who it's this other guy so is. mainstream with like the Joe Manchin shit. It's almost like if I'm from West Virginia and I'm watching CNN. And all I see is Joe Manchin. Like, that to me is like when Julius Randle on the Knicks last year was like an all-star. Everybody in New York is tapped into that. Like, it's all over mainstream media. So if I'm some, no, like, some poor coal miner from, not all poor coal miner, the coal miner from West Virginia watching CNN and I see Joe Manchin and they just keep saying Joe Manchin's fucking shit up, at some point I'm going to be like, yo, I got to vote for someone else. But do you think those people are watching CNN? It depends where they get their news. It might be that he did something specific for their district. You don't know. Like, it's just... I know he's getting, like, they have donors that give them money and that obviously... Like, the thing I kind of equate it to is when... um, What's his name from New York? Oh, Bloomberg was running for president. And, like, he had no shot at winning. And, like, he joined the race, like weeks or months after it even started and like even on top of that had no shot to win he poured so much money into tv ads and all this stuff that he won whatever state it was he won like the u.s virgin islands or some weary like off you know like because every t like every tv commercial must have been him so like maybe that much money in west virginia gets you just that much like publicity but i still feel like there's got to be someone else there or like another yeah. time when he runs to be like, yo, even all these commercials, like this guy is mad corrupt. Well, that's why I think uh, like – and I know I, I come back to Kyle on the political stuff, but I you know, I agree with him for the most part on almost everything. But when it comes to um, Joe Manchin, he says like when Joe Biden says all this stuff about, oh, you know, he's holding it up or whatever – he needs to either make him an offer he can't refuse so that he's on board and for like for real on board, or he needs to go to his, his freaking state, go to West Virginia and start just campaigning against him and just saying, there's this other guy who we need in office, not him. But like people have to play hardball. They have to, they have to do things that might not, cause like you can't be best friends with everybody Yeah. because ultimately you're going to have to get your agenda across. Yeah. So but that's what Kyle says. And I think I agree with him on that. If you want to see change, you got to stop being buddy buddy with these guys. But that's the start. thing. Like, I don't think they really even care about change. You know, like they want to no, do the everything is. It's maintaining the status quo. They yeah, all, they want to do the bare minimum. Power. Yes. And, the the bare and that minimum. Sucks because the people who lose are the people who actually would be affected by good legislation and and good bills that would help real actual people. But, well, that's what I'm saying. If all if Joe Biden really runs his Twitter and is like on Twitter and he just sees every single politician writing like cancel student debt like if he did that it would just be a wrap like it like his approval rating would be through the ceiling like there's ways to like that's why i don't understand is like if they know they're gonna lose or even be in a tight battle this next re-election 
there's like a get out of jail free card by just doing one or two things that they just don't realize works. But I'm just really confused. And I'm even going to ask Kyle, like, how, and I think I've asked them before, but like, how does Mitch McConnell keep winning? How does Nancy Pelosi keep winning when everyone knows they're corrupt? And it's just like out there, you know, Joe Manchin, how, how does he keep win? Like, when is his reelection thing? Is it every 40 years and you can't get like is he a supreme court justice guy like you can't get him out because it's like every other oh, practical real okay. city has a election and people get voted out yeah i don't know i feel like these people have been in office for so long that they just like they just become household names and people just assume that they're just always going to be there i don't know i don't know it's weird all right love you um love you too channel's back all right um Intro is dope. Yeah, Andrew. We'll do we'll do a few more of these and then we'll also when I go to Chicago, uh we'll do like a live or something. Yeah, live. Yeah, yeah. We'll do it up. Channel's back. I gotta just figure out how to restart it. <laughs> All right, love you. Next time you see me, beard's gonna be gone, so take a good yeah. look at it right now. And then yeah. I'll figure out how my hair is supposed to be cut. All, All right. right. Peace. Love you.